Hello everyone, this is Andrew Horton from MedMastery and in this edition of Ask Andrew we're going to look at how to diagnose a myocardial infarction in the presence of left bundle branch block. Here at MedMastery we take inspiration from our audience members for which topics we should cover in this series. And I'm grateful to all of these members of the audience who have asked us to cover this topic. And the question that we've been asked is, how do you diagnose a myocardial infarction in the presence of pre-existing left bundle branch block on the ECG? Now, it's often said that in the presence of left bundle branch block, it's impossible to interpret ST segment changes on the ECG. But that's not true, and there are criteria available to help us recognise acute myocardial infarction in the setting of a left bundle branch block. And to a large extent, these criteria rely upon what is known as appropriate discordance. This is what we normally see in left bundle branch block. So when somebody has a left bundle branch block pattern on the ECG, if they have a negative curious complex, then the ST segment tends to appear elevated. Conversely, if they have a positive curious complex, then the ST segment tends to appear depressed. In other words, there is discordance between the direction of the QRS complex and the direction of the ST segment normally in left bundle branch block. And we can see that very clearly if we look at the 12 lead ECG. So if we look at leads where the QRS complexes are negative, we can see that the ST segments tend to be elevated in those leads. Conversely, if we look at leads where the QRS complex is positive, then we can see that the ST segment tends to be uh, depressed in those leads. This is appropriate discordance. Now, when we're trying to diagnose an acute myocardial infarction in the setting of pre-existing left bundle branch block, uh, what we're looking for is a deviation from this rule. And this is summarized within the Scarbossa criteria. Now, there are three Scarbossa criteria that point towards a diagnosis of myocardial infarction. And the first of these says that if we see ST segment elevation of at least one millimeter in at least one lead with a positive QRS complex, then we should start thinking about the likelihood of an acute myocardial infarction. So normally, if we have a positive QRS complex, then normally we see ST segment depression. But if we are looking for evidence for acute myocardial infarction, what we'll be looking for is ST segment elevation in these leads. So in other words, we'll be looking for concordance rather than discordance between the direction of the QRS complex and the direction of the ST segment. Now the Scarbossa criteria act as a scoring system, and if we see this appearance of ST segment elevation in the context of a positive QRS complex, then that scores five points. The second Scarbossa criterion is similar, uh, and what we're looking for here is evidence of ST segment depression in the presence of negative QRS complexes. And the negative complexes that we're looking at are those in leads V1, V2, and V3. Now, normally in those leads, we will see that the ST segments are elevated because appropriate discordance says that if you have a negative QRS complex, you should have ST segment elevation. However, if the patient was having an acute myocardial infarction, what we'd be looking for is evidence of ST segment depression in these leads. And if we saw that, that would be concordant. Uh, and so that would be abnormal. And if we see this, then we score three points. The third and final Scarbossa criterion is a little different. Rather than looking for concordance, what we're looking for is extreme discordance. Uh, and what we're looking at are negative QRS complexes, and we're looking at the amount of ST segment elevation uh, in those leads. Now, normally we'd expect to see some ST segment elevation following a negative QRS complex. Uh, but what we're looking for for the Scarbossa criteria is evidence of very exaggerated ST segment uh, elevation, uh, and this is uh, when it measures five millimeters or more uh, in height. And if we see that, then we score two points. 
So having looked for evidence of these three different Scarbossa criteria, we add up the total number of points scored. And if the patient has a score of at least three points, this indicates, say, 90% specificity, but a poor sensitivity for a diagnosis of myocardial infarction. In other words, the Scarbossa criteria are good for ruling in a myocardial infarction because of their high specificity, but are not so good at ruling out myocardial infarction. So if we apply the Scarbossa criteria to this ECG, the patient certainly scores two points because they've got very marked ST segment elevation in leads with negative curious complexes. There's at least five millimetres of ST segment elevation in these leads. But they do not have ST segment depression in the anterior leads, nor do they have ST segment elevation in leads with positive curious complexes. So their total Scarbossa score is just two, and therefore they do not meet the criteria for the diagnosis of an acute myocardial infarction. It's worth remembering that the Scarbossa criteria can also be applied in right ventricular pacing. Uh, you might be aware that when a patient has right ventricular pacing, they have a left bundle branch block morphology on the ECG. And we can apply the Scarbossa criteria in this setting to diagnose an acute myocardial infarction. However, although the Scarbossa criteria do still work in the setting of right ventricular pacing, they are less specific in this context. In other words, they're not quite so effective for making a diagnosis of acute myocardial infarction. So in conclusion, I hope I've been able to answer your questions about how we diagnose acute myocardial infarction in the setting of left bundle branch block. If you'd like a reminder of the Scarbossa criteria, then take a look at the handout that accompanies this video.